friends, my name is Al or Lil Starnard and welcome to today's episode of Trans Rights, baby. Today we're doing another Make It Gay. We're adding another one to the arsenal and I'm honestly really excited about this one. I hope you guys are too. Although, <laughs> TBH, this one isn't really a Make It Gay because it's like by JC Landecker, so it's already gay. It's more of a Make It Trans, but it's, it's going under the Make It Gay category, okay? <laughs> Today I am painting JC Landecker's Spring Apollo and Animals in gouache on watercolor paper. I asked a while ago on Instagram for my trans followers to send in some requests for paintings they'd like to see made trans and I got some great recommendations, most of which have been added to my ever-growing list of pieces to make gay, but I love me some Landecker, so when I saw this one I knew I had to do it ASAP. So here we are. We're gonna talk about the original and the artist a bit later, but first I do have some things I'd like to discuss. So this piece actually came about for a couple different reasons. First of all, pretty much the entire time I've been doing Make It Gaze, I've been very aware that my representation was very cisgendered and very binary and I didn't like it, but I wasn't really sure what to do about it. The pieces I've been doing are usually a romantic scene and I do them on a pretty small scale compared to the original. So I've been having to fit like two full characters in a really small space. So there hasn't been much room for detail. And because of that, in order to make sure that the pieces read as gay at first glance, I've been going for very obvious femme and femme and mask and mask combos. There hasn't been a whole lot of room for nuance and gender rep in these tiny pieces I've been doing, and I had really been looking for an opportunity to change that. I finally found that opportunity in the last Make It Gay with the Awakening of Adonis. His shirt was open, his titties were out, I was doing it on big paper, and I was like, oh my god, now is the time to add top scars. I can finally spice things up. I finally found that opportunity in the last Make It Gay with The Awakening of Adonis. His shirt was open, his titties were out, I was doing it on big paper, and I was like, oh my god, now is the time to add top surgery scars, I can finally spice things up. Which leads me to the next big reason this piece today is being made. People ate that shit up. I got a lot of praise about drawing a trans man in my piece. Uh, there were quite a few trans people thanking me and saying that they really appreciate it because there's not much trans rep out there. Uh, basically I was getting a lot of back padding, and let me be clear, I am beyond thrilled that people like and appreciate and feel seen by the piece. Like, I cannot tell you how happy I am that I could do that for even just one person. I, I am so glad that people like it and I appreciate every good comment that that video and that piece received. And I am just beyond thrilled. I, I love that people love it. I'm so glad. But at the same time, I was getting upset because like, you're telling me that the bar is so low that I just have to add top scars to a piece and that's like praiseworthy. I was so frustrated by the lack of representation for trans people and I was now seeing the effects firsthand and I, I just, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe that the bar was so low um, and that I have the chance to help in changing that and that I haven't really been doing that, um, but I would I would love to do so because I don't think I deserved to be praised that much. <laughs> Again, I want to make it clear, I'm very glad people liked it. I don't want to make it sound like people shouldn't have liked it. I'm glad people liked it. I just don't think that I deserve to have my back padded like that. Uh, but you know, I want to I wanna do more rep, and so this Make It Gay is dedicated solely to repping trans people, um, which is a tiny drop in the bucket, but I, you know, I think it'd be fun to do. Um, and I plan on making an effort to add a lot more diversity in my Make It Gays in any way I can from now on. Again, I am so happy. Like, I am so appreciative that people liked the trans rep in the last piece. It was so, so fulfilling to know that I had made people feel seen and heard and touched by my art. That is what I think every artist dreams of doing and achieving, and to actually do that is, is nothing short of beautiful. I just think that what I did was not enough, and I have every possibility to do more, so I should do it. Anyways, that does bring me to my next point. Repping trans people as a non-trans person is a little hard. <laughs> I am once again asking the trans community to offer guidance. Basically, I feel like there's... Okay, okay, so hear me out, because I don't know how to succinctly say this. I'm gonna ramble. And keep in mind, as I say all of this, I'm talking about specifically the Make It Gay series, taking old classic pieces of art and turning them gay, okay? Not just drawing trans people in general, just keep that in mind. I am specifically talking about the Make It Gay series, because I think it's gonna add a lot of context, and without that context, I'm gonna sound stupid. <laughs> First of all, I am very scared of accidentally making a harmful stereotype that I didn't know existed. Um, on the flip side, with gender barriers essentially being non-existent nowadays, I feel like a lot of those harmful stereotypes are real people. 
Um, and I'm not sure where we as a society stand on that, or what the protocol with that is. Also, there's the matter that like every trans person is different, not everyone has surgeries or takes hormones or dresses in a certain way. Like both of the trans pieces I've done, including this one, are mask people with top surgery scars. But that obviously does not represent all trans people, nor does it represent all mask trans people. And I'm working with the limitations that I'm not painting nudity, so I can't show genitals. So like, if I wanted to draw a trans woman, I would just be drawing a woman. Like, I don't know how I would do that in a way that makes it clear she's trans without accidentally falling into harmful stereotypes. I'm really worried about, like, okay, like if I show someone binding, I don't think that a binder will really fit in with most historical time periods. I feel like bandages are more aesthetically appropriate, but I also don't want to show harmful outdated binding methods. You know what I mean? So overall, I'm finding this slightly confusing because I want to do it, but I want to do it right. And obviously I can't draw literally every trans person, just like I can't represent every queer person and queer relationship, but I don't want to be limited to just drawing top surgery scars because that's what is easy and what I know. So if any trans people out there have advice on how to navigate this situation or ways that you would like to see trans rep that would fit into this series, I would seriously appreciate it, uh, like a lot. <laughs> I would love to hear from trans people rather than just work off my own limited knowledge. Also, if anyone has any favorite trans models, please send their info my way because I think having some real person inspiration could really be helpful. Overall, it's just been something that I've been thinking about as I've been doing this piece and thinking about this piece is, you know, how can I best represent trans people if this is something that I want to do, which it is. I want to represent queer people and that includes trans people, but I I feel like I'm my knowledge is very narrow and I... <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like I could- I feel like I- I feel like a lot of you guys could help me out, so I'm just asking. If you want to help, you don't have to. Anyways. Okay, so with all that out of the way, um, let's talk about this piece. Um, I'm fairly certain this piece is called Spring Apollo and Animals. I'm not gonna lie, researching it was kind of hard. I didn't find a lot of info about it. Um, this painting was done in 1929. It's an oil on canvas, about 28 by 21 inches. I couldn't find any sort of analysis of the painting itself, uh, but it is a pretty straightforward piece. We have Apollo holding what appears to be a lyre, kneeling surrounded by some possibly like tulip buds, uh, some spring animals, nothing too crazy, nothing too deep. Uh, but since there isn't much to talk about with the piece itself, I thought we'd dive a bit more into the artist. Joseph Christian Landecker was born in March of 1874 and died in July of 1951. He was a widely known illustrationist in the 20th century and is a legend now. His work was primarily known for its use by companies for advertisements, most notably the Arrow Collar Shirts, Kellogg's, Pierce Arrow Automobiles, and even the US Army. He also had a lot of art used in publications, specifically the Saturday Evening Post, of which he made 322 cover paintings, which is actually one more than Norman Rockwell. What is so interesting about J.C. Leyendecker and his art is the fact that he was gay, and that tended to come through in quite a few of his pieces, uh, if you know, you know. <laughs> Historians have debated his sexuality, you know, he never married, and lived with his really good pal Charles Beach throughout his adult life, but they were clearly just, you know, really good friends. Oh my god, they were roommates. Who he left his estate to when he died. Just really good buddies, you know, guys being dudes. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Landecker actually often modeled a lot of his male figures after Charles, particularly the original arrow collar model that he painted, which is really adorable. <laughs> Landecker was a huge influence on a lot of artists, especially Norman Rockwell, and apparently also George Lucas, which is interesting. I guess now we know where he got his inspo for Luke Skywalker. <laughs> But to this day, his art is absolutely iconic, and he himself is a huge queer icon in the art world. If you're interested, I noticed while researching that he himself is a huge queer icon. Oh, that's not the right line. But to this day, his art is absolutely iconic, and he himself is a huge queer icon in the art world. If you're interested, I noticed while researching that there's a play called In Love with the Arrow Collar Man, which is about his and Beach's life, and a film from 2021 called Coded about his life. Um, I definitely plan on checking both of those out. Really quick, let's talk about the piece, my piece, uh, and then we'll wrap it on up. So like I said before, I did this in gouache, it's an 8x10, which I thought would be too big, but once I started sketching, I realized it was actually a bit too small. I wish I had more room to draw that beautiful face, um, I kind of lost some of the details and the, what I wanted to represent in the face, um, but I had already started and I was too lazy to try again. <laughs> 
I made a few changes to make it a bit more me, like using gold acrylic paint, adding those sparkles and stars, and I changed the font of spring at the bottom. I also made the little flowers the colors of the trans fly for funsies, just to try to get some more transness in there. Overall, I really didn't change anything. Um, I, I was really excited about doing this piece. I really liked the sketch. I love the piece itself. I love the contrast. I love the Art Deco 20s vibe. Um, and I was really, really excited to do it. But it wasn't until I was like about to sit down to start painting, like a week after I had done the sketch, that I was like, huh, I just added scars to this piece. I literally did not do anything to change it at all. Which I don't think is necessarily a bad thing. Um, I just, I kind of feel like there was definitely a lot more room for creativity that I, I didn't even consider taking advantage of, which why? But that's fine, that's just something to keep in mind for the next time. Overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think it's really pretty. I got really lazy with the flower buds at the end. Um, my camera kept overheating and it had been hours and I was, I was just done. <laughs> I was just done by the end of this. And it, you know, it was looking really good. So I was like, you know, it doesn't matter if the little flower buds don't look great, right? And honestly, I don't think it's- I don't think the flower buds take anything away from it. I think it's good. Um, and I- I'm- I'm proud of it. I really like Leigh and Decker's work. And I've only done a few tiny studies of his stuff, so I was really glad for this opportunity to- to paint this. It was a lot of fun. It's also the first time I pull- I've pulled out gouache in like a long time, so I really enjoyed using gouache too. Gouache, at least my gouache, is such a hassle to set up, but once I use it, I'm always reminded of like how nice it is to me and how it does half of the work for me. And now I'm excited to use gouache again, so that's good. But yeah, that's the piece. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And again, about the whole trans thing, I don't know if that sounded a little like... I hope that didn't sound bad in any way. I really want the opportunity to do it right. Um, and I, I want to hear from people who experience that life and that identity rather than just like giggling. What do trans people look like? Um, so I hope that didn't sound like weird when I was talking about it. No one has to share any information if they don't want to. Just, I just <laughs> want to make that clear. But yeah, I'm, I'm excited about future Make It Gays. If you have any Make It Gays um, that you'd like to see be made trans or something like that, classic pieces that you'd like to see made trans, um, let me know. I'd be happy to do it. Probably. That's a promise to make that I don't know that I'm ready to make. Um, I would love the recommendations. But yeah, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, you know the- you know the deal. You know the whole- the whole thing. <laughs> but yeah, go drink some water, go watch the sunset, and go do some art.